Well, the web's made a huge difference to my life, mostly because as an MP, it's, I was going to say quadrupled, but actually it's probably, I now get 10 times as many emails as I used to get letters. It makes it very easy for people to contact me. The challenge that this wonderful information web brings is child protection. We know that 91% of 5 to 15 year olds regularly use the net, often for quite long times every day. And yet, the ways to protect them from, for example, pornography are clunky and ineffective. And actually, frankly, most kids know how to get around them much better than their parents know how to implement them. And I think that unless we get cleverer ways to protect children, some of the changes which it brings to society could be very damaging. And if you have a program where I can be confident that children in my home are absolutely safe, then I can be adventurous with it, I can be uh, ambitious and so on. If I am not absolutely confident that children will always be safe, then just in terms of parental time, you know, you're going to have to be supervising, making sure that devices are in places where parents can oversee them, all that kind of stuff. I think it'd be great if you can uh, have less parental observation and more child freedom uh, as long as it's in a controlled way. And I think that's the big challenge. If you fix that challenge, then we can be even more playful, even more experimental, uh, and really change things. When I uh, look at how older people use the web, uh, one of the things that's really striking is Skype. And I see uh, grannies in my constituency Skyping away to relatives the other side of the world. And I think that having that human contact is actually very important. I don't think we've used the power of something like Skype, anything like enough. Sometimes just seeing how someone is reacting can give you messages about how well they are, how safe they are and so on, which you can't get any other way. And I think that the web is going to be able to provide us new tools to help make sure that vulnerable people are self safe, to keep in touch with people who need to have regular contact and so on. I think there are some really quite interesting opportunities there that we haven't kind of, I certainly haven't had the imagination to work out yet. In a society where nearly everybody is connected, being unconnected can be very isolating. I remember when I was a child, it was the very early days of black and white television, but people who didn't have a television became sort of socially excluded because they didn't know what was going on in the same way as everybody else. Uh, and uh, for, the, for those of us who had a television, we had a kind of shared language, we could, uh, we experienced the same things and so on. And so I think that not having access to the internet is likely to make those people who don't, socially excluded in that kind of way. I organised a debate here in Parliament on social responsibility and internet-based companies because I, I'm concerned that companies too often uh, kind of invent something clever and new and then think, oh whoops, it can be used in an inappropriate way and we haven't got a plan for how to do that. And in my view, companies should have a clear set of values, a clear set of protections before they institute a new programme, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, whatever it is, to say this is how we are going to protect people using it. So as well as making the internet a safe place to be, what we also need to do is to make it a place where everyone can be.